Hello, and welcome again to another study of God's Word with the University Church of Christ. We will be over the next couple of weeks looking at passages of Scripture from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5. And we pray that the things that we say and will be beneficial to each and every Christian. We're going to begin our study momentarily uh, after we have a verse of a song, Give Me the Bible uh, in Prayer. Meanwhile, we're going to invite you to get a Bible and a pencil and a piece of paper so that you may write down any uh, passages of scripture that you might want to look at um, at a later time for study. So that being said, let us begin and, and let us sing one verse of Give Me the Bible, followed by a word of prayer. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that radiance, peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time of study. We pray that as we look into your word, that we'll be able to draw some things that will help us to live lives that are more pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We thank you for this letter that Paul wrote to the young man, Timothy, and for all that it teaches us about preaching and teaching the gospel and about living in a way that's pleasing and acceptable before you. We know, Father, at this point that the whole purpose uh, is to save ourselves and those who may hear us. So we pray, Father, for opportunity and that we'll take advantage of each and every one. Thank you for Jesus coming and dying on the cross. Uh, and we know that it is an acceptable saying that Jesus Christ came uh, to save sinners of whom I am chief. So I am thankful to you, Father, for this opportunity and thankful for your blessings and ask that you will bless us all in a way that we can always look to you and know that you're taking care of us. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. So we are going to be again uh, over the next couple of weeks, looking at the book of First Timothy, chapter five, uh, and uh, the subject matter is basically the treatment of church members. There are different groups in the church. Uh, the church is comprised of many different uh, people, and all of those people have needs. And Paul writes to Timothy, letting him know how to meet certain of the Christian's needs that he'll come across. And it's certainly advice that is applicable to us today. So um, I, I thought what I would do um, is um, kind of back into um, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Um, on how to treat church members um, and just do a little bit of talking tonight, uh, today about uh, being a part of the uh, family of God, because that plays out very important in the way that we treat one another. Uh, very made very clear in these passages of scripture. So we're gonna begin um, by just uh, looking at the beginning of what Paul tells Timothy to do in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1 and 2. He says, do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as father, 
young, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters with all purity. I wanna, again, just concentrate on the family aspect of this uh, uh, passage of scripture. Uh, the fact that Paul is mentioning fathers and, and brothers and, and mothers and sisters um, really brings the uh, idea of family um, into perspective. Bible students generally know that we are heirs of the family of God. Um, and we find it written in several places that really bring the point home that God has adopted us into his family. Um, in this Romans 8, uh, 16 and 17, we see that we were led by the spirit, uh, by God's spirit into uh, this uh, sonship. Um, in Galatians, the third chapter, verses 27 through 29, we see that we're heirs by faith. So our faith has a lot to do with us uh, being heirs of the kingdom of God. Titus, chapter three and verse number seven, we see uh, that it's by grace that we are made heirs of the kingdom. And I want to just um, take a look at this Galatians passage. Galatians chapter four, um, verses three through seven, and just kind of give a few little commentaries concerning that. I'm going to pull it up on a Bible here. Um, here, um, Galatians chapter four. Um, Paul, uh, and, and this is a wonderful book. Uh, we studied this book and we learned a lot. It's, it, it, it's a fascinating study about um, the people of the law, how God uh, used the law uh, to, uh, in, to, to bring them to Christ uh, is what this passage of scripture is talking about, verses one and two, uh, because the law was for them a bondage um, and for anybody that would try to keep it, 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 it was a yoke that uh, when the fullness of time was come, was done away with. Um, and we'll see that in just a minute. In uh, verse number three, um, Paul writes, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So just like the children of Israel were in bondage under the law, uh, we find ourselves in, in bondage of the elements of this world. Um, and, uh, and of course, we know that that is pretty much the state of all men until they come to know Jesus Christ. Um, and then uh, by his love, his grace and his mercy, he pulls us out of that bondage um, and he puts us in a right working relationship. Um, and it goes on to tell us in this passage of scripture, those very uh, fact, or that very fact. Um, in verse number four says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. And here it is, to redeem those who were under the law that they might receive the adoption of sons. So, uh, the, the, the law was a bondage to uh, the, the, the children of Israel, and it actually uh, took them out of the realm of sonship uh, from the aspect of what Paul is talking about with Jesus, how that God gave the law for a time, and uh, when Jesus came, um, that, uh, that that time was done away with, um, and the uh, Jews were adopted into the family of God. But um, we need to understand that this also applies to, um, to, to everybody that decides that they're gonna um, accept God, that not only um, because uh, uh, we, um, we were um, under the beggarly elements of bondage in the world. Um, and again, God pulled us from that. 
um, and he has put us um, in a right working relationship with him and has given us sonship, just like he did to those Jews. Um, there's no difference between us and them. He goes on to say to redeem those who are under the law that he might receive adoption and become the sons of God. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Very powerful statement um, that, that now um, we, we, we not only call Father, we call Abba, Father. Um, Abba is, a, I believe, is Aramaic uh, for the word Father. So we get to call him Father double over, Father, Father. Um, and it covers all different languages, uh, all different people that God uh, allows all of us to become his sons through, uh, through adoption. And then verse seven, therefore you are no longer slaves. We're, we're, we're no longer under the beggarly elements of the world, just like they're no longer under the beggarly elements of the law. Uh, we are no longer under the world, but we are sons. And if sons, then heirs of God through Christ. So this passage makes it clear to us that God brought us into his family and he makes us heirs together uh, through Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, I want to just um, make a little pause here and, and I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, and, and I hope it's not confusing to anybody, but um, I, I, it's a point that I think we need to be careful of. Um, I, I was actually looking um, during the study to try to find uh, where um, uh, me and Jesus are brothers. Uh, I know uh, there are some denominational teachers that refer to Jesus as the elder brother. Um, and um, and and um, and different passages of scripture. If you um, don't uh, be careful with them, uh, those are the kinds of understandings that you get. But here's what: God is so much higher than we are, um, and Jesus is God. Um, and uh, I know that um, the uh, passage of scripture that is used is Hebrews, uh, I believe, is chapter two. Um, and verses 11 through 13, where um, Paul, or where the writer um, talks about how Jesus uh, was not ashamed to call us his big brother. Well, he's got that right. He's God. He's, he, he's the holy one. Um, and, 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 and he counted us worthy enough uh, to call us um, his brothers. But in my study, nowhere have I found where anybody except his family, and then I don't see it directly, um, refer to him as brother, um, because it gives us too much of an equal plateau with him, uh, where Christ is much higher than we are. Um, and um, while he can call us his brother, uh, we need to understand that, um, that, that, that the, the, the equalness is not there um, as far as who God is and who we are. So I hope that's not confusing to anybody, but um, it, it's just a point that I think we need to be careful of, that we not think um, that, that we're on the same level because Jesus um, has adopted us into his family by his blood and has counted us as brothers. Um, we can't count him as brother because he's so much more than that. So um, just, just a point that, um, that, that, that I found um, as I tried to uh, weigh through, um, as I tried to weigh through this uh, particular passage of scripture. Okay, so let's uh, move on. So um, we were all bought into the family of God. We're all heirs of the family of God. Um, through Jesus Christ. Um, and these are just a few of the passages. There's many others that we could have drawn on, but I just wanted to uh, um, just kind of show us um, how we get to where we are. Um, let, let, let's take a look at a little bit of what the Lord did while he was on the earth um, with, uh, with, with his disciples. 
um, there, there, there's um, a point when Jesus was teaching um, and there was a whole lot of folk around um, and it's recorded in Mark chapter three, verses 31 through 35 that we'll be looking at. Um, but it's also recorded um, in, um, in, um, in Luke chapter eight um, and verse number 21. Um, it says there, um, and we're going to look at Mark's account. Then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And the multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brother are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around him in a circle at those who sat about him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For who, whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. So Jesus calls a whole family of uh, disciples um, and, and he um, uses intimate terms, uh, mother, brother, sister, um, are, are, are all very, very close um, or, or considered to be very, very close uh, relationships. I, I want us to, to note that Jesus is not being disrespectful to his mother and his brothers um, by saying this. Um, the, the task at hand required that he deal with um, the multitudes that that was his mission um, and uh, again we can look back and see several places where Jesus um, tells us that we've got to forsake family uh, and follow him but he's not telling us to neglect them um, because we're following him as a matter of fact as we look through scripture um, we're, we're going to see quite contrary to that um, that God wants us to take care of our families um, and, uh, and so Jesus was not at all um, distancing himself from his mother um, or his brothers. Um, he was just recognizing his work. Um, I like to compare this to the relationship that I have with my own sisters. Um, since the uh, start of COVID, um, my sisters and I have uh, grown rather close. Um, we have Zoom meetings regularly um, and we just talk and we have time together. And um, just the, the, the last time that I got to see them was wonderful um, this past summer. Uh, but um, in, in all of that, um, I, I, I have a wife and I have children um, and I, I have to spend time dealing with their needs. Um, and um, because of that, um, I, 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 I can't uh, tend to my sisters um, the way that, um, that, that I would if I didn't have a wife and children, um, because my wife and children have precedent now. Well, Jesus is not neglecting his mother. He just has a more important work right now uh, to take care of, and, um, and, and he recognizes uh, uh, where that work is. You think about who Jesus spent time with widows, um, orphans, um, the downtrodden and the sick, um, they, they needed his help. And, uh, and as um, the, 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 the member of the family that would step up and take care of those kinds of things, um, that's the place that Jesus found himself in. And so uh, he was simply telling his mother and his brother, right now I've got to deal with the work of my father. Um, and so uh, he answered them in this way. But I want us to also note this passage of scripture in John chapter 19, uh, verses 26 and 27. And this is while the Lord is on the cross and he's dying. Uh, he looks down and he sees his mother. Um, and uh, 
the, the scriptures read, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. Pay attention to this. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. So as Jesus is on the cross, um, if we backed up, I believe, one or two verses, we'd find that there were other women there. Um, but uh, as far as the disciples were concerned, John was the only one. Uh, and he was standing by his mother. And Jesus makes a request of John. You, you got to know that this was not John's mother. This was Jesus's mother. And Jesus makes a request of uh, John. Look after my mother. And so John's reaction to that is in that very hour, that disciple took Jesus's mother home to his own house. Now that, that says something because that means that he took care of her and um, this was not his mother. However, um, I'm sure John was there when Jesus said, look, these are my mother and these are my brothers and these are my sisters. And now he's seeing the Lord's mother, his, 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 his biological mother standing there and knows that he needs to honor the Lord's request to take care of his mother. In the university family, um, we, we have many needs um, that come from different groups that we have, groups um, that are um, just a part of life. Um, seniors, singles, married, parents, yams, and it, it, it is actually a much bigger list uh, than this. These are more or less um, along the adults of our, along the lines of our adult ministries. Um, but I want us to note that our seniors have needs um, that need to be met. Our singles, they have needs that need to be met. Married, parent, um, our young adults, um, all of them have needs that uh, need to be met. But here's the thing, each one of these groups have different needs. Seniors have different needs than the yams, and um, and and the parentings parents have different needs than than the single folks and 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 and, and married folks. They they have uh, different needs, um, and so there has to be a way. Paul wants Timothy to find a way to address the needs of these saints. He wants. Uh, all Christians to be treated in a way that they can bring glory and honor uh, to God. And so they need special treatment in those areas um, that, um, that they have needs. So in the family of God, we have all of these different uh, groups and all of them have um, different needs. Back to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verses 1 and 2, Paul says, do not rebuke an older man. Um, we're going to talk a little more about that uh, next week, um, but Lord willing, um, but exhort him. And also, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the exhortation. Um, but what I want us to get from this is that we are to exhort him as a father. Um, our, our, our older men... Um, if you're older than I am, um, you, 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 you've, you, you've been around for a good little while and have seen some things in life. And, um, you, you know, don't minimize um, the, 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 the blessing of age um, because you see what works and what doesn't. You, 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 you can see things coming um, and, and be uh, a source of advice to younger people. Um, and so um, 
and, and that's what fathers do. They, 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 they advise their younger uh, men and women on things in life. Um, and it should be no different in the church. We should look to our older men um, uh, for those kinds of things. We need to look at our um, younger men as brothers. Um, that, that's pretty much a lot of our strength is in our younger men. Um, and, 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 and we need to treat them like brothers. Um, and, you know, brothers act a, a particular way. If it's a tight knit family, I, I, I know I come from a huge family. Um, and if you mess with one, you mess with us all. Um, and that's, that's how we got to uh, look after each other as brothers. Um, older women, as mothers, we need that compassion um, in our lives. Um, and we need the education that they give to our younger women and our younger mothers, um, our younger women um, who are our sisters. Um, they have a specific set of needs um, that have to be met um, with purity. And we'll be talking a little more about that um, in the weeks to come also. Um, but just understand that Paul is opening up a discussion here on how we've got to treat each other as church members. Um, we, 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 we're, we, we, we've got to be more than friends. We've got to be family. And family looks after family. Um, there's certain things that, um, that, that a family, if it's close knit, will stand up against um, and make sure that the whole family uh, has the protection that it needs. So Paul is encouraging Timothy to look after some of those things, um, and we'll be looking a little further into those in the upcoming uh, weeks. Okay, so for your homework, I'm going to ask you to please read in its entirety uh, the fifth chapter of the book of First Timothy, uh, that you can catch the context of what we're going to be talking about. Um, and I'm going to also ask you to please read the lesson six, uh, pages 26 and 27 in our workbooks, um, and then answer questions one, two, and three on page 28 in our workbooks also. Well, again, um, just happy to be studying God's word with you um, as we go along and talk a little more about these things um, that are very, very important uh, in the health of uh, university family and in the health of the body as a whole. Um, we, we need to be family. And Paul is going to show us um, just how to do that. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you again for the examples that you've left for us in scripture to follow. And we pray that we can uh, be the family that you will have us to be, have the relationships that are within the family that are pleasing to you um, and encouraging to one another that we can move on and uh, do those things that are commanded of us in your word. Please bless our minds and our hearts, Father. Give us peace um, and uh, help us to stay close to your side. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen.